Welcome, my name is Mats Olsamar. This is part two in a series of presentations. Basic information on how the Olsamar engine works can be seen in part one. In part two, I will talk about the Olsamar engine with two combustion cylinders. In part three, I will talk about the Olsamar engine with three combustion cylinders. It's also possible to design the Olsamar engine with one or more combustion cylinders. But the basics explained for two and three combustion cylinders will also apply for these designs. This is a normal two-cylinder four-stroke engine. It has problems with vibrations as the two pistons move in tandem up and down. And the torque is also uneven as only two out of four strokes gives positive torque. The other two strokes give negative torque. So power and intake first stroke, positive torque. Exhaust compression, negative torque. Intake and power, positive torque. Compression exhaust, negative torque. This is the Ulsamar engine with two combustion cylinders. Half of the exhaust flows directly to the turbo and the other half is pushing down on the extra exhaust piston. When a combustion cylinder breathes out, then we get some torque from the exhaust cylinder. When a combustion cylinder is in power stroke, then the exhaust cylinder will push up and give negative torque. The peak torque will therefore be lower during power strokes, and during other strokes there will be less negative torque. Together this will give the engine a smoother torque curve. Another benefit is less vibrations, as the extra exhaust piston balances the other pistons. Two-cylinder, four-stroke engines are not optimal for a turbo, as the exhaust flow is uneven. The main idea with the Ulsamar engine is to extract extra energy from the exhaust and give smoother flow to the turbo. The two exhaust peaks from the combustion cylinder are divided into four smaller exhaust peaks that will drive the turbo. A smoother flow is less stressful to the turbo and will allow a larger volume of exhaust to pass, or allow us to fit a smaller turbo for the same flow. With a smaller turbo, the engine will work better at lower RPMs, and this smaller turbo will still be able to handle the same maximum exhaust flow. Warning. Exhaust pulses are not sinus-shaped curves. I have used sinus-shaped curves as an example, but the shape of real-world exhaust curves will depend on many variables. This curve is an example of exhaust pressure. It's not the flow of exhaust, but the pressure in PSI, pound per square inch above and below atmospheric pressure. Note that the exhaust valve opens before the piston reach BDC, bottom dead center, and it closes after the piston reach TDC, top dead center. The positive pressure pulse reaches its maximum before the piston reach bottom dead center and the positive pressure is soon over and is then followed by negative pressure in the exhaust. The high positive pressure in the start is created when new exhaust from the cylinder is accelerating into the exhaust manifold where it's blocked by old exhaust that's standing still. The negative pressure that follows indicate that the exhaust speed has been high but there's not enough new exhaust to follow and this causes the pressure to fall. When the intake valve opens, the inflowing air will push out the last exhaust before the exhaust valve closes. We usually define the exhaust stroke as the 180 degree rotation of the crankshaft when the piston moves from bottom dead center to top dead center, but the exhaust valve is open a longer time and most of the exhaust is vented in the beginning. Piston motion is only a sinus curve if the length of the connecting rod is infinite compared to the crank radius, but that's never the case. The connecting rod is limited in length and the piston will therefore move faster in the upper part of the cylinder than in the lower part. A normal inline four-cylinder engine where two pistons move up while two pistons move down are therefore not balanced, as the speed of the pistons are not the same in both directions. Inline six-cylinder engines are however famous for being vibration-free. A single exhaust piston that's connected to the same crankshaft as the two combustion cylinders and reaching top dead center when the other cylinders reach bottom dead center 
is therefore not ideal to handle the exhaust flow, but could be an acceptable solution on a low-cost model of the Ulsamer engine. The efficiency could also be improved if the exhaust cylinder changed its phase to handle more exhaust in the beginning, when the exhaust valve opens and there is higher pressure. But there is still a problem. At top dead center, the piston will move very slow. And this is not good, because this is when the exhaust pressure is very high, and it would be very advantageous if the piston could move very fast right here. A free piston doesn't have these limitations, and is therefore more suitable as exhaust piston. The problem is however cost, as connecting an extra exhaust piston to the crankshaft is much cheaper, and the free piston will also require power electronics and a high capacity battery to handle both high capacity charging and discharging. There is also some conversion losses when mechanical energy from the piston is converted into electricity. The free piston linear generators on test have shown large differences in conversion efficiencies at different RPMs and loads. An alternative that could be both efficient and economical is to combine one small exhaust piston connected to the crank and one small exhaust piston connected to a linear generator. The exhaust piston connected to the crank can transfer mechanical energy with low loss and the small free piston with linear generator can easily adapt to different conditions of exhaust flow. And its smaller size will be less demanding on power electronics and battery. It's good if the capacity can be handled by a 48 volt mild hybrid system, as higher voltages require mechanics with special education and special procedures to work on, and that adds cost. The design of this engine is unsuitable for overlaying camshafts. But if we limit the RPM range, we could use push rods instead. And push rods are very reliable and works well at lower RPMs. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and thank you for your time. If you'd like to know more, then contact me on this email address, mats at ulsama.se. You can also watch video part 3 where I talk about the Ulsama engine with three combustion cylinders.